There you go. <laughs> um, I, well, I'll start, uh, what do you about, like, giving a little uh, Reader's Digest where I came from, man. Uh, I was telling Whitney I grew up in a small town uh, called Carrollton, Georgia, right on the Alabama border. And um, it's a, a farm town. It's not anymore, but it used to be a farm town. And I grew up on a cattle farm there, and a uh, 250-acre cattle farm. And I uh, had five brothers and sisters uh, that I like to talk about a lot just because I'm the baby and they kind of put their creativity all on me. Um, I had a brother that was Andrew Lloyd Webber's Phantom in Europe and uh, for about five years. Wow. And uh, then have another brother, uh, and all of them were very successful, but I just highlight these two, that, that wrote a book about the Almond Brothers and a book about Otis Redding and has been nominated for a couple Pulitzer Prizes. Um, so as a, as a baby growing up in this family, and I was an accident baby, so like one of my, my oldest sisters, 18 years older than me, I didn't have any choice but to follow what they do, and it was music. And uh, so my, my first 18 years in life were completely identity doing music, and then I decided I was going to rebel against my family, and I went to business school, and they, they thought I'd lost my brain, man. They were like, what are you doing, going to business school, sell out? And uh, uh, enjoyed that education. I went to Georgia State University, which is downtown Atlanta. Uh, we just got a football team, so one day you guys may hear about us. Um, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty famous coach as well. Yes, absolutely. Uh, th <laughs> he's the only thing famous there. <laughs> and uh, the, um, but you know, what, what the one thing that I, I figured out in my life is that, that music was not there. You know, and it was my heart and my soul. It was, it was who I was growing up, and and. Uh, Changing your identity doesn't work out so good sometimes. So I decided to turn back to music and and uh, do it professionally. And uh, me and the guys have been been uh, working together for almost a decade. And uh, around the Georgia parts uh, is where we started. And we started touring in Georgia. And uh, before we actually expanded out to other states, we sold over a million tickets in in Georgia, and uh, over 1,500 shows in almost 10 years. And uh, ended up opening a place called Wild Bills in Atlanta. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of Wild Bills. Uh, it's the largest country music concert hall in the United States, and uh, we played there as a as a group for um, almost four years before we had to go to Nashville because you couldn't get the job done in Atlanta. You know what I mean? Like you had to be there, and uh, uh, and so one of the first song we're going to play y'all is is one that talks about the music kind of where we come from, and it's where y'all come from too, which is really cool. Like when we're in California. Uh, sometimes uh, we're on the West Coast. Sometimes uh, saying that they don't really get it until they hear the song. But you guys understand the North Florida, Alabama, Georgia thing. And uh, we were just talking about Tom Petty on the way here, and, and uh, you even hear that guy in our music, you know. Um, but this first song is called Muscle Shoals to Macon, and it's the first side on the album, and it's kind of the introduction to the album, even to Texas people. And uh, <laughs> Um, and it, uh, the little town I grew up in is right, sits right between Muscle Shoals, Alabama and Macon, Georgia. And, uh, and is, for, for those of you who don't know Muscle Shoals, Alabama, it's one of the most famous studio towns ever. And, uh, it's a teeny Alabama town, but everybody from the Rolling Stones to Bob Dylan to almost every major country artist is recorded there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then Macon, Georgia, of course, is, is famous for the Almond Brothers and Otis Redding and Capricorn Records where Kenny Chesney fought, signed his first record deal. And, um, and this song will tell the rest of the story. It's called Muscle Shoals to Macon. I was born to a backwoods freaking rock and roll preacher man. Spend my nights in the honky tonk Sunday morning singing the old church hymns. They said the devil got right to me. I go to hell for playing that kind of music. I love the smooth, backbeat groove, and then them strings. Girls that scream, where'd you learn to play that thing? I said, way down there with Jesus meets Randall Hank Bocephus and the Queen of Soul Aretha across Mason Dixon line. We're hammering organs humming, that swamp us with them thumping. Get you some joy to love and all those beaches gonna blow your mind. I was schooled by the South baptized in temptation. Somewhere all between Muscle Shoals and Macon. It was a full Pentecostal gospel tent revival by the riverside. She was hollering in a stretch of Alabama asphalt in the summertime. Said just a little pinch will do ya. Then she shouted out hallelujah. I said my guitar moves ya. And makes you bring your tambourine girl. Where'd you learn to shake that? 
that thing. She said, way down there with Jesus, meet Randall Hank Bosebus, and the queen of soul, rhythm, across from me some big sunlight. We're hamming dog and humming, that swamp us with them thumping, get you some Georgia loving, all the feet just gonna blow your mind. I'm schooled by the sound baptized in temptation. Baptized in temptation Somewhere Between Muscle Shoals And make There's definitely some Skinner's pump running all over it, man, for sure. It sounded, it sounded, it sounded like you mixed in a, a Leonard Skinner riff. Like, you got to, man. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Thank like you very much. Thank you, Woody. Um, they won't throw you out of the state. They will actually embrace you. <laughs> See, you got the state at least. Well, you yeah. Got the state. <laughs> so you can dance to it. <laughs> Um, well, I'll remember that one. I'll be like, uh, Whitney said that we can play this in Texas. <laughs> you can. Yeah. yeah. We're approved. And then, damn it, please. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I could slide that one. <laughs> um, the, the next song we're going to play for you guys is my favorite song on the album. And it, it's a song uh, that when it came into my life, I was at the end of a six-year relationship that I didn't know I was at the end of the relationship yet. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, I, uh, I had... In, in the music business, you spend so much time with your career, and you guys know that, and you spend so much time trying to accomplish your goals and do the things you want to do that I just hadn't been home enough and hadn't been taking care of business the way I needed to. And when this song came into my life, it was my wake-up call. I realized that, you know, and, and, uh, and I worked my tail off on it in the studio for my girl. You know, I was thinking it was going to save our relationship, um, but it was already too far gone. And um, she and I are still best friends, but at the same time, um, you know, it, it's uh, one of those things when I look back, she's such a wonderful person that I, I wish that I had woken up a little earlier. But the cool thing is that this song uh, gives me an opportunity to help other people out because anybody in a relationship needs to hear this song. And, uh, you know, we all work our tails off every day no matter what your business is. And, and at the end of the day, the people that count are the people at home. You know what I mean? Not the 60-hour the week people, but, you know, uh, the people that, that love you at home. And they're the, always the ones that get the short end of the stick. But um, this, the song is called This Letter, and it was written by some really great songwriters in Nashville that are buds of mine. Arlo Smith, who wrote Mayberry, uh, Rascal Flatt's number one hit. Um, another guy named Rick Giles, who's written, written tons of number ones. Uh, and then another artist uh, on Capitol Records, Walker Hayes, who's a buddy of mine, um, who wrote this, the, uh, the, uh, was the third writer on the song. Um, and uh, I'll let the song tell the rest of the story. It's got a cool twist at the end, so you have to listen for it. Let me make sure. This good old humidity in Florida, especially today's humidity, is uh, keep you on point for tuning your guitar. It's called this letter. Someone, when I saw what it said, I love the rush I feel when we make love. Baby, you're all that I've been thinking of. You're everything I wanted in my life. Man, those words. Come 
but like a knife And so I promised myself Even if it takes forever I'm gonna find the man who wrote this letter I ran wide-eyed to the kitchen She was standing by the stove She said, what's the matter, honey? Did I do something wrong? So I shook that letter in her face That I held in my fist I said, who have you been seeing? And who the hell wrote this? I love the rush I feel when we make love Baby, you're all that I've been thinking of You're everything I wanted in my life Man, those words cut like a knife And so I promised myself even if it takes forever, I'm gonna find the man who wrote this letter. She grabbed that letter from my hands and told me through her tears, You're right, I love this man. I've carried this for years, back when we poured more in the love than in the fighting. That's when I look down like a fool and recognize my writing. I love the rush I felt when we made love. She was all that I was thinking of. She was all I wanted in my life. Man, those words. But like a knife And so I promised myself Even if it takes forever I'm gonna find the man who wrote this letter Baby, I'll be the man who wrote this letter